Is this bloke sliding into my DMs? <laughs> How are we, mate? Good, brother. How are you going? Yeah, good, man. Oh, first things first. Happy Friday. Cheers. Cheers, mate. I'm trying these out. I got these. I went to Torquay for the long weekend. It's like a party yeah, yeah, weekend, yeah. bro. It's like ginger beer, tropical punch. Next level. Pretty good. No, it's not. It's which um, brewery is that? Is that that black, uh, what is it? This um, is Moon, Moon Dog. Okay. Moon. That's pretty good. Moon dogs. Yeah, man. Yeah, right. I don't know that one. The other one, I tried one a few months ago. It was um, like a uh, hail, uh, what do you call it, like a hazy ale. Um, and I'm trying to think what it's called, black, black I think I know stone. what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 But when we were down there, uh, literally every man and his dog were drinking these. I thought, you know what, I'll give them a try. And they're pretty good. I brought some back. Yeah, nice, man. Good stuff. Um, man, oh, it's been a while. The very first yeah. guest from the first season, back when we had all kinds of uh, technical and audio issues, which was, was a good time. Um, was that back so hopefully we've was improved things since then. Down at that time, I can't remember. Was it? Yeah, we were. It was. Um, it probably wouldn't have been. Oh, I might have been right in the middle of it all. Yeah. You know, where we had that break where we went out of them and it looked good, and then it got shit again. Um, one of the one of the one week freedoms we had. So that's right. Yeah, yeah, because it was. Uh, yeah, it was like about a year and a half ago now. I think it was like. Um, I remember I didn't like a, an impromptu interstate trip and just got back and had you on. So I think it might have been like late August or something, twenty twenty two. Been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, man. It's been a while. So um, no, it's good to catch up, man. Um. How have things been since we last got good. to actually have a long chat right. like this? What's been happening? Good. Busy, busy. Yeah, we didn't get to catch up long at Meatstock. It was all oh, it was chaos, man. Um, I rolled into to Meatstock in the morning, and funny story, because the wife and I normally go together, but this year she's like, you know what? I don't think I want to go two and a half hours for a barbecue festival. So I went by myself, and um, I was like, well, I'm not driving back. I'm gonna have a few beers, meet up with people. So I booked the Airbnb, and then it wasn't until the day I realized that I booked an Airbnb 40 minutes out of Bendigo. <laughs> so I was like, I might as well just driven back to Melbourne. So it was on this farm. Like, I'm driving back from Bendigo to the, to the accommodation. It was like, yeah. black, man. It's like farm everywhere, no lights, nothing. So it was fun times. It was fun times. But uh, everything's good, bro. It's been real busy at the moment, you know, work, fam, and everything, cooking. So Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I understand because you are uh, last time we chat, you're just about to have a, another newborn again, weren't you? So, yeah, he's, he's one and a half now, man. It's crazy, yeah, so he's it's like crazy. Running around, like, don't be surprised if you hear something fall over in the background because he's pulled something over. So, he's a little terror, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right. But he loves, he absolutely loves pork ribs, man. Pork ribs, Oops. he'll absolutely smash them. So, yeah, <laughs> nice, man. That's it. You got to get him into it early, start him young. That's it, that's it. <laughs> My eldest son, he's eight, and he won't go anywhere near a barbecue. He's all keen for it. He's like, oh, let's make smash burgers, and then I'll fire it up. He's like, nah, I don't want to do it anymore. So I'm like, oh, you come don't. on, man. Yeah. He's like, I've had enough. Like, you haven't done anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon with um with the meat stock thing, the travel became an issue for for a lot of people. I think because I, I mean it was completely worth it too. Like it was um, it seems like it got almost as big as Toowoomba was, but without the having to walk from the yeah. campsites back to the um, to where everything was. But I know there was a lot of people that missed out on going or just uh, didn't want to just do the drive, wanting to stay, but they missed out on getting the camping tickets and all that as well. And even that was quite a hefty price, but um, if you could make it happen, it was actually, it was pretty good because yeah. the, the whole thing never really ended and even people were going back and grilling back at their campsites a bit. So that was kind of like they kept the party awesome. going the whole time. Yeah, you know what? The nightmare, it was a nightmare drive to get there, but when I pulled up, the line was massive going down the street both ways, and I was just like, I had flashbacks to Flemington last year where we lined up for over an hour to get in. So I thought, man, I'm going to be here for ages, dude. Within 15 minutes, I was in the gate. It moved so yeah. smoothly, and I feel like it was just a lot more organised and you could move around more freely. I feel like, too, because they had more entrance gates because they had yeah. them all around. So you could come in from either angles. The only one you couldn't get in was where the teams were. Um, and then, like, anyone staying also had their own spot. So, yeah. But we even had the line. Like, they were making everyone wait there, and it packed up. But the way they did it, it wasn't like one person threw, get a wristband at a table. It was kind of, like, ironed up so everyone could funnel through. Yeah, so it didn't came, create any congestion, which is pretty good. Even when I came through, I think they had, like, eight, people leading people in so it was a nice solid 
move on there. But yeah, I really thought I was going to be waiting ages. But within 15 minutes, I was through the gate. I was so pumped. I was except for the long haul of waiting. But it was real good. That's good, man. And so when you finally got in there, what happened? Because I think you got stuck uh, helping out at Toad's Kitchen Cupboard for wanted, most of the so, time, didn't you? Because I pinged him. And I was just like, hey, man, I'm coming along to, to me. Stuck. He's like, oh, if you've got some free time, come along. Because it was so hot, dude. Like, you know, I'd go out, I'd look around, um, and then I'd find myself going back to TKC's tent and just chilling out with him. And then people would come up, and he'd be busy. So I'd start having a yarn with people. I'm like, yeah, slinging his chimney. You get chimney. You get chimney. But yeah. um, I'd keep going back in when it was hot. But I spent a lot of time walking around, and it was good because i just go back, done my stuff at his tent, and then just end up giving him a hand because he got pumped, man. It was awesome. The amount of people coming along wanting to check out his stuff and that inside area was just going off all day it was so cool it was there was a lot happening and i think too because they were getting through all the different stuff like all the um the you know the the sausage sizzle competition yeah. and then dad bod they were constantly having something that were bringing people in and so everyone the stalls just got flogged anyone on the inside was getting yeah. um i've never actually like with toad's kitchen car but i've wanted to actually get walk past gave him a wave yeah. But I've never actually caught him in person. And every time I'd walk past to try and actually like do a proper introduction and talk to him, it's just boom, boom, doing. So um, that's awesome that he was doing so well because it was yeah. every stall in there was getting completely flogged, which which was good. So yeah, even outside, like the the turnout outside was awesome as well, man. Like the oh, amount yeah. of people that were there, like just trying to walk around and navigate around, it was pumping. So hundred percent vibe was good, too. real good vibe. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, it wasn't. It, it, it was hot as shit, but yeah. it wasn't. Um, it wasn't super congested like at the showgrounds in in Melbourne. You know, it was like bumper to bumper a lot of the time, and everything was in that sort of circled yeah. motion where you could cut through all the different ways through the oval and get to wherever you wanted pretty easily. There was no tied up congestion, so I think that made it easier because if you combine that heat from that sun and all those people. Like, I would have stayed inside as well. It was um, well, last a lot. Year, wasn't last year was real hot as well, yeah? Wasn't there a So it was hot on the Sunday, yeah. but the Saturday it, it was overcast, but it was like a humid overcast. It was like 26 degrees and, like, drizzle. So it was humid, and then you had people everywhere. Um, yeah. So this, this time it worked out pretty well. You could deal with the heat because there was enough open air and enough shady spots if you found yeah. them to sort of hide away at. So. There was a one, one thing I'm shattered about, though, is I really wanted to see Casey Barnes. But he played on the Sunday, and I only went the Saturday. So I think it was one of your stories on Insta. I saw him chilling out in the crowd. And, yeah, you know, so cool, but... it's a funny thing. Like, um, I wouldn't say we chat frequently or anything, but we've had Insta messages back and forth just yeah. on barbecue stuff over the like maybe the last year or so as I've tagged him and stuff and used his music and reels or whatever. Um, and so we've had sort of that, like, you know, comment, he'll comment on something, be like, good feed or whatever, and I'll go yeah. back or his new single, good single come back, thanks, brother, whatever. When I was there, because I was right up the front, because I was like, I've, I've got to catch him again this time, um, right up the front sort of filming, I don't know if it was specifically like, but as he was doing a cover of um, Footloose, he walked down and did a crowd thing and walked around to everything, but he sort of like beelined straight towards me and I turned the camera on him and he started singing in the camera. I was like, this is mad. Um, and then he went around to everyone and he was doing – like, talk about crowd participation. It was really cool. So, yeah, that's a bummy miss going on. But even a lot of the artists that played on the Saturday, I didn't know a lot of them. But, man, it was so cool to just chill out there and hear these bands rock out. Oh, man, yeah. Like, um, I don't know if you listen to, like, Chase Beckham from the States. Um, I didn't he's blowing up at the moment. Everyone's like, oh, Chase is playing there. I'm like, oh, good on him. Who's that? I didn't even know. All I yeah, yeah. Was Casey <laughs> Look, to be fair, a lot of the people there know he's got one single out at the moment. There's, like, a number one called 23. Um, and a lot of people were there for that, and everyone shouting at him, go and play it. It was like, we'll get there. But um, a lot of people had just come out to see him, I think, purely that yeah. night. Like, there were that many people wearing tour shirts, and he wasn't doing anything else in Oz. Like, they'd sort of just flown him here for that. Oh, really? uh, yeah, he wasn't even at CMC, like, the week before or anything. So um, it was sort of a big deal for a lot of the people who'd want to catch him. So I think a lot of people came in and camped for that night and then left again after and that. Then so, last year, Brad Cox played, and... I only started getting into Brad Cox's music after Meatstock, and then I realised later that he played them. I'm like, oh, shit, I missed him, man. I missed him. But... Yeah. I was the same. Like, I only started getting into James Johnson's stuff, like, maybe six months ago or so, and then realising he's at Meatstock. Like, ah, oh, shit, that's not enough time. Yeah. to like, <laughs> you learn the catalogue and that. But, now between Chase and Casey, and then you got the Wolf Brothers as well, um, that was all pretty good. Like, that was all... He had a fair bit going on. So they did a really good job with all, all the artists and everything they had going on. So 
If they can keep that up again next year, even if it's Bendigo, man, I'm I'll be stoked. Yeah, I'll be pretty keen. If it's in Bendigo, I'll go again. I'll, I'll plan my accommodation better this time. I won't stay waiting forty minutes out from uh, from the venue. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Since when you booked that, no idea at all. There was no I, like. I just went into uh, Airbnb and I just typed in Bendigo, and then I didn't realize it was bringing up surrounding locations as well. Yeah. And this person had their spare room going for like fifty bucks. I was like, book, book. So I booked it, and then um, yeah, it wasn't until day of I realized it wasn't actually in Bendigo. It was forty minutes out. So. You probably had like a fifty k radius thing on or something probably, like a. But I was just like, oh, funny story now. At the yeah. time, it was an absolute nightmare. Um, just take a second to say thanks to everybody that's coming on. Uh, we've got Mad Snake Jake, who we got. We had Ray on in here, uh, Brad, Barbecue Adelaide. We've got a fair few coming in and out, so thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Appreciate that. These things, sometimes you don't get a lot of numbers, especially, you know, the timing's not ideal. Friday night, a lot of people cooking dinner for the family and that, but we upload it now. We put it on YouTube, and anyone wants to watch, go for it. So at the end of the day, folks like yourself and me just like talking about barbecue and shit. So. It's selfishly more yeah. for us than anyone else, but... What are you cooking this weekend? You got anything cooking? This weekend, man, I don't know if I have a whole lot of time. I've got a few things going on. Um, we're off, heading off to Echuca again in a week, just taking another week off, um, going up there for school holidays with the kids. So I just got a lot of things I've got to plan and do. So hopefully I can grill something up quick, yeah. whether I'm doing wings or hot and fast ribs. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not locking myself in, so we'll, we'll see how we go. What about you? What are you doing? I think I might do wings. It's been a while since I've done some wings, but I'm actually going to start doing a, this week, I'm going to start dropping videos of a, a um, I'm going to call it a series, game day snack series, so like a whole pile of snacks you can do. So I'm going to drop the first video on Sunday. We'll probably do some cooking for that. So but I really want wings. It's been a while. Um, I picked up a few new rubs at Meat Stock, so I want to give those a bit of a run, man. So I picked up some of the Steph Maori rubs, which I've heard a lot about. Yeah. I finally got some, so I'll give those a bit of a run and see how they go. But I'd definitely do some wings. I don't know, maybe something else. Maybe a steak. Yeah, not sure. So with that new series, because that's something else I wanted to talk to you about mm. as well. So it's been probably, what, a few months now that you've been doing the, the new format where you started yeah. doing your reels yeah. with the camera, audio, transcript, all that. How are you finding all that? Are you finding more engagement? Are you? Is it taking a lot more effort? Are you enjoying it more? Or Look, it's taking a lot more effort, but look, I enjoy it, man, because I get to cook. I get to show people you know, what they can do with stuff. Um, engagement's been a lot better. People are more interacting with it. But for me, I wanted to move my account from a faceless account more to, you know, being in front of the camera and stuff. Because um, I find, you know, if I'm watching and there's a faceless account, nine times out of ten, I'm probably just going to scroll past it. Um, but I wanted to do something different as well because it's been a faceless account for a while. But it does take a lot more effort. Um, whereas before, I'd be just cooking dinner and um, just pull my phone out, take videos. But I'm under strict instructions from my wife. She's like, I'm no longer eating cold barbecue. You're not filming while you cook dinner. So so now, I've got designated times on the weekend where I'll actually cook and most likely vac seal the stuff yeah. later on. Um, but yeah, it does take a bit more time because I want to you know, try to get some good shots in there as well and not just whip out the phone while I'm cooking. Yeah, no, 100%. That's the thing too. Like I find people really do, if you can put up a name to the account or a yeah. personality behind it, people want to engage more. And it's, it's not so much more about engagement it, from, you know, growing an account or what you're trying to do. It's more just as far as this barbecue community goes, you build more of those relationships too. And when a time like meat stock comes, people know who you are and you're actually making friends from it. You're actually building an audience that isn't around I'm just trying to grow it. I'm just trying to be numbers. You actually end up, people can connect with you on a more personal level. And it, I think those are the people you can see really love their barbecue because they're willing to take that extra time, get behind, and you hear the passion when they talk about it. And that's the stuff we see with your reels. We see with a lot of other guys as well. Um, I think that stuff really matters for getting people on board with whatever you're doing, no matter what journey it is, if it's barbecue or something else. I think it's a, a pretty important thing. So yeah, that's good stuff, know, man. And it's all, it's all looking really good for you. I'll give you a funny story. There's a guy I work with, right? And back when I was a faceless account, <clears throat> when, he, when he first started working together, he's like, your name sounds familiar. I was like, oh, really? I was like, sorry, man, I'm not sure. Your name doesn't ring a bell at all. He's like... I can't quite put a put a finger to it. And then it wasn't until I started doing the face reels, like showing my face, he realised that that's where he knew me from, was from, he followed my <laughs> socials. So, uh, yeah, but it's funny. But 
you know, you're exactly right, man. When, when I went to meet stuff, like I actually got to meet a few people because they recognized my face, not my logo, which was awesome. So I guess like, I got to have a yarn with a few people. Um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it, man. Well, I mean, like, you know, we, we, I, you know, I think I was doing something. I was walking in that main shed and you yelled out my name or yeah. I, we spotted each other or something. And that's probably legitimately until you're doing these reels, you know, we, we spoke on the first live stream, you know, however long ago it was two years ago or whatever. And that's put it. Yeah. But that's the only reason why. So you definitely do get a little bit more noticed or, um, what I found really good. And this was really unreal for me at Meatstock Cause like I'm nothing. Like I don't claim to know a whole lot. I just cook. I love it. And I like sharing, teaching people how to do it where I can, you know? Um, but having that face on an account, a few people, and obviously having the shirt and all that helps. <laughs> obviously, they see that, but they kind of feel. I had a couple of people come up to me and actually wanted to get a photo, and I'm like, "Well, I don't oh, like it's 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 a, it's, it's a strange guy. thing because it's like I'm not like it, you get imposter syndrome to the max. It's very, but at the same, you understand that these people watch and connect to whatever you're doing, yeah. and it just reiterated to me why I love doing what I'm doing and why I go so heavy on the YouTube channel. Because if you can help people out and they enjoy watching your stuff, not only are you you're getting that engagement, but you you like I said, you're just adding to this community. That's all yeah. you're doing, and you're building it. And if we all grow, then the community grows, and barbecue in Australia grows, and then things like meat stock get bigger and bigger. So that's perfect. Hundred percent. So, with um, what what's the rest of your plan for twenty twenty four? Obviously, you've got what you're saying, you're going to do this new series and everything. Yep. Um, is there anything in terms of um, changing up content, doing more? Are there any other, you know, how's things going with Oklahoma Joe's? Is that all steaming along yeah. well? Oklahoma Joe's are awesome. Been with them for a couple of years now, so they're good to look after me. But in terms of 2024, don't have a lot planned, man. Like, going to continue the content. I think I might look to, to hit the comp scene at some point this year. I know there's a comp coming up in Mafra. This month, next month, no, this month I think. Okay. So I'll see if I can scramble to get a couple of boys together, a couple, a couple of things set up. We might be able to hit down and hit it, but if not, definitely want to try hit the conversation this year. Um, I'm going to start branching out to do a little bit of catering as well. So we do some at the moment through word of mouth, but we don't really fully advertise it because every man and dog does catering now for barbecue. You literally, you jump on social and you'll see someone offering up their services to cater. But um, probably get into a little bit more of that. Just keep things interesting, but I think the content and eventually have the comp scene. Want to try to do a bit of traveling around, so I'd love to head over to South Australia for one of the comps that's coming over in October, just as a spectator, not to compete. Yeah, because a lot yep. of the blokes I talk to are from over that way and got to catch up with them at Meatstock, and it was awesome. So I'd be keen to catch up with them again, have a few more beers somewhere else. Yeah, awesome, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so we, I think last time we spoke. And I know you're a beef short rib guy, and that was, I think, when I asked you, what was your favourite protein? Yep. Is that still the case? Still beef shorties? It is still, it is still the same, man. Beef shorties. Um, definitely beef shorties, closely followed by chicken wings, man. You can do so much with wings. If you look through my page, 70% of my content is probably chicken wings, man. Yeah. They're so good. You can do anything you want with them. Um, but I want to try to do some experiments with beef shorties, man. I've seen a lot of people actually butterfly them and roll them, stuff yeah. them and roll them, which I've never oh, done yeah, before. Yeah. just cooked them on the bone. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's actually been a while since I've had a cook of beef shorty, so I might have to look at doing some. Yeah, I found the same thing, man. Like, I hadn't done them in – last time I did them, uh, it was a real easy smoke. I had a lot going on for the day, and they were on the Traeger for, like, eight hours. That was sort of the last time I did them, and that was probably before Christmas. Um, and then the last time I had them was at Meat Stock when I had um, – where was it, Carolina – no, no, no um, – Whatever vendor we were talking about, and they were actually really good because it slid off. Like, obviously, you don't want full fall off the bone, but it slid off, so it was enough that it was moist and juicy enough, but it was like you had the bite mark in it. It was like they'd almost done it real comp style. Um, I know we talked about the brisket burger and all that. Oh, yeah. I think you got, I think you locked out, man, because I, um, when I had it, it was like juicy, hot, the fat content was good. So I don't <laughs> know what, what you ended up scoring, man. I don't know what happened, but. Yeah, I look. There were some things that were good. Like, maybe because I'm not a massive brisket fan. Who knows? Well, who knows? Look, I, I, it wasn't. The, you were the only person who said that, but I'd also heard from multiple vendors. So I, I, I wonder whether it's the time of day. If you get the, you know, if you get the bits at the end of the day, um, or if you get them too early and they're not 
you know, they're not probing fully. To, I don't know. Obviously, with catering and doing that sort of low, low and slow, you really got to – it's going to be a game of um, how close can we get at it, isn't it? Like, it's not It's not going to be at ideally what they want the whole time. So, yeah, I think maybe I just got lucky from that. Um, I think we're talking about those chicken and lollipops too. I actually didn't get a chance to try that which I'm bummed about, um, but everyone was raving about how good they were. I heard so. a lot about them, so I think next time I see them, I definitely want to try them. Everyone raved about them. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll be going there first next time because uh, every time I went, the line was ridiculous. The line was crazy everywhere. There's one, I think I was starving at one point, and I got some skewers from some place, and it was the um, the least packed line there was, but it was the food was average. But I was just so hungry. I was just like, man, I need to get something to eat. And so I lined up, and look, they were okay. We weren't the greatest, but... I was really keen to get some of those pork belly lollipops. Yeah. The long- yeah. There was one place, one place like that as well. I, think, I can't remember. It was one of the the ones down the back of the strongman shed. And there was like three people lined up. I'm like, I'll go. And I got this box. And for what it was, it was actually pretty good. Like, because um, no one was lining up, they were sort of expecting it to be, yeah, okay. So, so but it, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was good. Like, yeah. Barbecue with no line. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. That's good. Yeah. Hey, what do you got? You got you got ducks going off in the background or something. You can hear something. There are birds in the air and cows walking around behind me. So oh, yeah. um, we're doing a bit of a farm stay at the moment. So I kind of have had a bit of day. Hey, get some picking duck going. Time and well, on those ducks. Well, I'll tell you what. If these cows keep mowing, we're going to be having big shorties. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, so, um, no, nah, all good, man. Look, it was awesome catching up. Um, we'll definitely got to do a third one sometime, and I think next time we're at Meatstock, try yeah, and catch up again in person like and try and catch you, man. Hopefully. And um, I know you float, hopefully, float around, and yeah. you're in Mulgrave too, so obviously oh, yeah, my uh, workplace is in there. So when I'm around, man, it's been sort of weird days at the moment when I'm in, um, but if you're ever around, man, and I'm in, I'll, we'll, we'll do something. We'll meet up somewhere and we'll, we'll figure it out. Give me a call, mate. I'll fire up and we'll cook some wings. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Uh, thanks for jumping on, dude. And um, keep up the awesome content, dude. I mean, that that's like, you know, like the reason I had you on as the very first guest, the stuff you had back when I first started following your profile, the quality was good. The food looked awesome. Everything you're doing is good, man. So um, keep it up, man. And have a good weekend. Cheers, brother. Have a good one. Good chat. Cheers, mate. Yeah.